As a result of a Russian missile attack on the village of Kroza in the Kupiansky region yesterday on October 5th, 51 civilians were killed, including a six-year-old child. I can't say good afternoon, so I say just hello. This is Henry Keane on UATV English, doing my best to explain some awful truth in easy terms for the whole free world directly from Ukraine. People in Rosa village got together for a memorial event. It was a remembrance moment to remember their deceased relative. They were all killed by Russia. That's right, Russia. Russia is a murderer. Not just Putin, not just the Kremlin, Russia. The vast majority of the country, Russian nation. Every single one who supports Putin's authority in any way. Well, I've just come from meeting President Zelensky where we discussed this horrific attack uh, that has just happened. It just illustrates Russia's barbarity and President Putin can say all he likes. There is one person responsible for this illegal, unprovoked war and it is him and he should stop. Mass murder in Raza was committed deliberately. Raza is a small remote town and the building set for Russian missile as a target is a very small building. So obviously the attack was not an accident. The strike was purposely targeted and obviously the Russians are at war with the Ukrainian nation, no less, and are intentionally targeting civilians, exactly as it happened before, for example, in Irpin, where about 50 people were killed as a result of a Russian missile strike on March 9th, 2022. The outrageous war crime in Kroza yesterday is probably the biggest mass murder of civilians in Kharkiv Oblast since the full-scale invasion. Well, the biggest mass murder so far. Mark my words, everyone involved will be held accountable for what happened. Moscow will not be able to falsify or hide the circumstances of the tragedy, no matter how they try. And they do try. Want to know what Ukrainians feel today? Try it yourself to take your family and come over to Ukraine, go to Kharkiv, take them to a cafe, and just pop out for a minute, then return and find all of them dead. All of them, just ashes and shock and grief. And honestly ask yourself afterwards, just one question, when someone would then advise you to negotiate with Russia, would you? No, please don't come over to Ukraine. Don't take your family to Kharkiv. Stay where you are, stay safe. Just do us a favor. Next time you want to give us a piece of advice, don't. Don't tell us to negotiate with a brutal thug that attempts to kill us. We won't let go. We won't step back. We won't negotiate. Russian terror cannot be stopped by any negotiations without proper punishment. Evil will only multiply. This is why we will win. Join us and help or step back and be silent. The so-called President of the Republic of Abkhazia, Aslan Bjania, wants to make a permanent deployment point of the Russian Black Sea fleet of Ochamchira. That is a seaside city on the Black Sea coast of Abkhazia, Georgia. Exactly, Abkhazia is a territory of Georgia, illegally occupied by Russia. The illegitimate Russian administration installed there calls itself the government of an independent republic, but no way. Ukraine supports the territorial integrity of Georgia within its internationally recognized borders, including the Autonomous Republic of Abkhazia. Moscow has demonstrated multiple times that it does not appreciate Georgia's neutrality in the Russian-Ukrainian war and that the strategy of the current official authorities in Belize is not to provoke. Moscow will not protect Georgia from continued Russian expansion. Russia is setting up a naval base in the temporarily occupied Ochemchir of Abkhazia so they can, that's right, evacuate their fleet from the temporarily occupied Crimea. And that in turn needs to be done as a consequence of successful attacks of Ukrainian defense forces targeted on Russian ships and military infrastructure, in particular on the headquarters in Sevastopol. Defense forces of Ukraine are going to liberate Crimea. And there is nothing more and Russians are afraid of but liberty and freedom. Russian dictator lost sanity, if ever had it. During a meeting of the Valdai summit in Sochi on October 5th, Putin made statements on the Russia-Ukraine war and Russia's place in the world. Putin's speech in Sochi proved his inadequacy. The dictator openly lied, contradicted himself and threatened the world again. 
Putin criticized the attempts of some countries to dominate others. Really? Despite the fact that this is precisely what Russia is doing with regard to Ukraine, no? The Kremlin dictator claims that Russia is not looking for any new lands, while his troops are currently attempting to annex six Ukrainian regions right now as you are watching this. Putin appeals to international law, yet there literally is no international law the Kremlin did not violate in most perverted ways by announcing a forcible revision of the established world order. Putin even publicly mocked the Wagner PMC group, despite its significant contribution, just by the way, to the implementation of his aggressive plans in Ukraine and in the world. This is a signal to the dictator's entourage that he's ready to destroy anyone who threatens his rule, and there will be no regard to past merits. It was Henry Keane breaking the hard truth in easy terms for you in our daily wrap-up today. Please do not hesitate to like, comment and subscribe. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Your opinion matters to us. Ask us a question and we would be happy to do our best to answer it in our weekly wrap-up this Sunday. Stay safe. See you on Sunday.